Hello everyone, welcome back to our my 2018 tutorial series on the solar system project. So far, we have created the entire solar system uh, as far as the basic objects go. Uh, as inside of our outliner right here, you can see this is the list of all the planets and moons. Um, in this lesson, we're going to go through and actually texture all the planets. So let's go ahead and just dive right on in. Um, we're going to close this and just uh, close the outliner and exit out of our four panel and go into our perspective view here. Um, you guys didn't quite catch which button I hit to get to the perspective view, which is this icon right here. That is the quick uh, button that will bring you to your perspective. You can also press space bar and just hover your mouse over the perspective window, space bar again, and it will bring you right there. Okay, so next I want to address is how to add texture on our solar system planets. So what we want to do is we want to open up the hypershade. So the hypershade, you can get to in a couple different ways. Um, you can create a split screen and navigate, or uh, make that second screen your hypershade, um, like so. Just click on this icon right here. It creates two different screens. Here's our perspective view. Here is an orthographic view. Um, but this is just going to be our hypershade. So we can go over to where it says panels, go down to panel, and select hypershade. All right, so there we are. Um, if this opens up and you don't have all the different bins and whatnot uh, here when it first opens, um, you can always go to where it says window right here. And you'll see the browser, which is this one right here. You can see the create bin, which is this one over here, and so forth, whatever bin may be missing. And they're all set up as floating uh, um, bits, so you can just take them and undock them and slide them back into wherever they need to go. So you can reshape this however you want. And the reason why Maya does this is it makes it where if you have a second screen, you can just take this, rip it off, and bring it over here into the second screen um, like I have. But um, I'm not going to need this one. I'm not going to need the material viewer. I'm just going to be working with this one here. These are the three I mainly need. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive right on in here. Uh, some things you might want to know if you're unfamiliar with shaders is that Everything that's inside of a 3D viewport uses a shader for the renderer so that you can see it inside the viewport. Um, also for final renders and so forth. Um, so each of our different types of shaders are available to us over here inside the create bin area. Um, you can see over here we have Maya and we have Arnold. Um, these ones will um, narrow down the type of shaders we have available over here on the right. So if I click on surface, it brings it down. You see this got a lot shorter. And these are all of our surface shaders available through Maya. And when you see Maya and you see Arnold, what this is really telling you is that um, the Maya renderer will render Maya shaders. Arnold renderers will render Arnold shaders. So if you're just curious about that bit, that is what that is. Um, just so you know, we are using student versions for this because I'm teaching this as an educational class, um, which means that if you are going to do any kind of rendering and you decide you want to experiment with Arnold shaders, they do come out watermarked, so you won't be able to use them um, without that um, obscuring your final render. So I usually recommend that everyone just sticks to the normal Maya surface shaders. That way there's no watermarks, um, and that way you can have a nice render piece for your portfolio. Okay, so jumping right on in, uh, we're going to use our Lambert shader primarily for this lesson. Um, we use three primary um, different shaders for texturing different objects. We typically use our Lambert, our Fong, and our Blend shaders. Lamberts are very diffused. You can see in the picture of the, the ball in here that there's not a lot of hot spots like there is in this one right here. I mean, there's not a lot of specular fall off. Um, so uh, if we we're going to make it to where it was a very diffused surface, like a table or something to that effect, we would pick Lambert. If we wanted to be shiny like it was plastic, we would probably go with a blend. And if we wanted it to be glass and have that kind of um, uh, hot spots to it when the light hits it, we go with a fong texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump in and use our Lamberts. I'll just go ahead and create a couple of these. We'll do, let's say, five to begin with. I'm gonna need more than that, but let's just start with five. Um, for this lesson, I would like it if all of your, um, your different shaders, your Lamberts, were also named, but what I want them to be named as 
is the planet that they're going to be texturing followed by Lambert, not Lambert and then the planet. Otherwise, there's just not enough room here on these little tabs to be able to see the planet name that's associated with the shader. So for Lambert 2, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the 2 off of it. I'm going to call it Lambert, or I'm going to call it Sun underscore Lambert. And you can see over here now we have Sun and underscore Lambert, meaning that if I cut anything off, I'll cut it off the Lambert side as far as readability goes on these little tabs. Okay. Next bit is actually adding the texture in. So click on the, the uh, new uh, shader here. We go over to the attribute editor. So on the right side, you see these tabs here. One says channel box there, editor, modeling toolkit, attribute editor. Go ahead and click on that. Um, if this does not pop open or you don't see no side tabs here, all these side tabs here are located on these top tabs right here. So if one happens to be closed down or isn't loading, just simply click on one of these guys. It'll tell you which one it is. Like this one's modeling toolkit. This is the HIK. This is the attribute editor tool or uh, uh, tool settings and channel box there editor. So just an FYI for you guys. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, we have our attributes pulled open. Um, we have our color attributes at the very top, um, followed by a bunch of other ones that we don't really need at the moment, but we'll get into a little bit later on, such as transparency, ambient color, which causes a self-lit type color going on, incandescence, which makes the surface look like it's uh, lit, like it's a lit surface, bump mapping, which is what we use for creating texture through normal maps and uh, displacement maps, um, and so forth and so forth. And they get much more in depth the further we go down. Um, but to keep it very simple is all we need to focus on is our color attribute for today. Um, on the right side of this attribute, you'll see this little checker box right here. If you click on this, it'll allow you to pull open a node editor or a create node renderer. So basically what this does is it, it uh, attaches something to the shader. And what we want to attach to it is a file, which is going to be the image we're going to use to texture our planet. So we click on file. There we are. And it, you can see over here that inside this uh, little graph area. We don't really deal with this a whole bunch, but this, if you like dealing with connection graphs and whatnot, this is what's going on here. Um, so actually it's this one. And let's, uh, take some Lambert and bring it down here and graph and put out the connections. Now you can see that here is the Sun Lambert. Um, the texture is not yet attached to it. So if I want to go ahead and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up something. And it's this one. There we go. Craft and put out the connections. And now you can see that there's the file and it's being piped into our color attribute. You guys don't actually have to do this part. I'm just giving you a visual example of what's going on underneath the hood. And then this we're going to pipe into our actual object. So if I was to take this, uh, Sun Lambert here, and I middle mouse button click on top here. You can see there's a little plus sign next to my mouse now. If I take that and drag it onto our Sun Lambert, nothing happens right away. Um, we have to first enact or activate it to where it will display textures. So if I click on this icon, the little ball with the textures next to the light bulb um, inside of our viewport, we can now turn on textures inside of our scene. But again, not a lot happens. It got a little bit of a darker. Um, shade to it, maybe yours turned black, but not a lot has changed yet. And the reason why is because we actually haven't associated the file to this shader yet. So you see again over here, our color attribute, you can see now there's this little pointer arrow, right? Or you might still have the file node uh, open over here. Um, if you are in the file node area, that's fine. If you are back here, the way you get to that node that is inside here, this, this one right here, that's being piped into the color, you just click on this arrow right here and it brings you to the next connection, which is our file. Now we can go to where it says image name, where the folder is, and we can go ahead and click on that. And that's going to navigate to where our source images are. Now, source images, uh, we don't have anything in here yet. Now, if you go to Moodle, you can download the solar system texture file packet and you can put it inside your product folder and we can now plug them in. If you are not in my class, I will make a link for you down below that you can find in a Dropbox these same solar system textures. You can follow along as well. All right, so let's say you just downloaded your solar system textures and you now want to put them inside your product folder. Okay, so simple enough. We'll shrink down this part here. 
here's my solar system project. Okay, let's put that over here. And we're going to open up my source images, which is this one right here. Okay. So now here is the downloaded solar system textures. Go ahead and double click on this guy. All right. And now I need to move all these textures over into here. Now make sure you don't put them inside the 3D paint textures. That's not where they go. They go inside the source images. So I'm going to click on one. I'll just hit control A for all, and I will drag them into my source images area. Okay, now we're good. Close this down. Actually don't even need this anymore. Go ahead and delete that. All right. So now my project folder has all the appropriate source images for the rest of our project. Great. I can now close this and return to my. All right, so now let's go ahead and go through this one last time where it says color. I'll go ahead and click on the arrow, go to folder, and I will now go to where it says sun map and hit open. Mm, that should See, there's a simple answer we can find to that really quickly. Let's check the file here and go back. Hmm. Oh, I see what's going on. These ones are duplicates. Okay, so these guys I actually don't need at all. Um, I'll have to delete them out for this program. But we can see down here, here's the sun map. That's the one I wanted. That's why I had an issue. Okay. All right, that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete out those problem ones that I just located. Um, I'm going to go to source images. And the way I found out that these were the bad ones was that um, I'll have this view as a list. So maybe you guys can see it as well. Um, these top ones up here that have the underscore in front of them, um, they were only four kilobytes kind of indicated that they were not necessary and don't have any actual image information in them. So delete those guys off. There we go. These guys. Perfect. All right. So problem solving on the fly. Okay. All right. So now we are done with the sun. That's great. Let's go ahead and move this project along. Let's go ahead and get the rest of our areas here, uh, our rest of our planets textured. Um, the Lambert one, I always tell my students this, do not mess with Lambert one. And the reason why is because anything you create inside your scene is by default going to be textured by Lambert one. So if you go ahead and assign a texture, every object you create will have that same texture. And we don't want that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this one alone. Now, of course, you can always fix this if you accidentally texture Lambert one, is all you have to do is go into this area over here and delete off this file node that is connected to your color attribute. Or you can go over here and uh, click on the right mouse button over here and do break connections and that will also disconnect it from there. Now, you don't need to do that for the sun, I was just trying to make an example. Okay, so moving along here, we're gonna go to Lambert 3 here and we're going to delete off the three and we're going to the front of it and we're gonna go ahead and call this one Mercury. Oops. Give a little bit more of a space there. Okay. And for Mercury, let's go ahead and go to the color attribute over here. Click on the checker box, go to the file node over here. And this is just going to be repetitive from here on out. We're going to go to the folder. We're going to search for Mercury map. There it is. We're going to hit open. And there we go. Now all I have to do is drag and drop this texture onto here. Right? Okay. There's Mercury. Okay. Next one is Venus. So let's go ahead over to Lambert 4. Remove the 4 and we're going to put Venus in front of it. And we're going to go to the color attribute, click on the file node, go to the folder, and we're going to navigate to Venus here and go to open. And again, we'll drag and drop Venus, middle mouse button, drag Venus on top of this planet here. Now, I didn't say this earlier, but just in case uh, you guys are going from the classroom to your home computers, 
you need to make sure that you're setting Maya's project when you set it to your home computer. Otherwise, Maya won't make that direct connection from where the source images are to your current project. So you want to drag your project off of your thumb drives, put it on your computer, and you want to go to File, Set Project, and then go to Solar System Project and set it. Otherwise, what will happen is Maya will create a default folder inside of uh, um, the program files when it first opens up. And what it's going to want to try doing is looking for the source images and saving files within that until you reset it to a new project. So making sure that if you're going from my classroom to your home computer that you're doing that. Otherwise, you're going to be having some issues here getting those texture connections to either um, be reconnected or just to connect them in the first place. Okay, moving along again, we're going to go to Lambert 5 here. We're going to go ahead and call this one uh, Earth 